Okay, here we go with lesson three, uh, the third lesson in solving equations. And like the last time, we're going to get a little more challenging. Um, this, this one is focused solely on in, um, solving an equation with multiple variables. Now, it's very closely tied to what we've already talked about. What is the goal when we're solving an equation? It's to isolate a variable. What changes when there are multiple variables? Well, what changes is we don't know what we're actually solving for unless I tell you. So I'm going to do an old problem, 2x minus 3 equals 15, which you should be able to figure out. And then we're going to compare that to a new problem, ax minus b equals c. So I'm going to write it out step by step. So the first one, I'm going to add 3. Now I'm going to do something here that doesn't look natural. And there's a reason for it. I'm going to leave this as 15 plus 3. Then I'm going to divide by 2. And I'm going to divide by 2. So I get x equals 15 plus 3 divided by 2. I'm going to go over to the other side and do that one first. Or before I com come back to the one on the left. I know I can go a little further with the one on the left. But I'm going to do the one on the right first. I'm going to solve this for x. And that's a key thing. So I need to move B and I need to move A. So I'm going to move B to the other side. So I get AX equals C plus B. Then I'm going to divide by A. And I get X equals C plus B divided by A. Now, if you look at these, these answers look very, very similar. Something plus something divided by something. What's the difference? Well, the blue one, I can't do anything with that. C and B cannot combine. I can't divide by A. So I leave that alone. So my answer on this one is C plus B divided by A. That is my answer. However, on the one on the right, I can go further. 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So I get X equals 9, which is what we're used to seeing. So the only difference is with numbers and only one variable, I can combine the numbers to get a single numerical answer. With multiple variables, I can't. Okay, so even though our answers look different, the process that we used to get there is exactly the same as the one we've been using, which should be good news for you. You're just going to have to kind of get used to the fact that the number or the answers look a little bit weird. So we're going to practice some problems here. All right. The first one, if you think you got it, again, pause, try it. We want to solve each equation for X. So we're going to get X by itself in all four of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the three and the four. Now, those are both numbers, but the difference is I cannot combine that number with the Y. So I have Y plus 3 equals 4x. And then I want to divide by 4 to get x by itself. And I can't really combine anything there. So x equals y plus 3 divided by 4. And that's it. That's all I can do. So in reality, these problems actually require a little bit less work than problems that we've done in the first two lessons. Number two, I've got x over m equals 4n. So that's division. I want to get x by itself, so I need to move the m. x divided by m, I'm going to multiply by m to get rid of the m. And this is actually a one-stepper. 4n times m is just 4nm. Done. Number three has a little bit more to it. Yes, we're dividing again, but I want to get X by itself, right? To get X by itself, I can't divide by M. I could divide by M, but that puts X on the bottom, which is gets kind of weird that way. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to multiply by the denominator, which, yes, I know is X here. I'm not getting X by itself. What I'm doing is I'm getting X in the numerator first. It's a good habit to get into. Get your variable that you care about in the numerator. It's much easier to handle in the numerator than the denominator. 
So now all I need to do is move the 4n. So I'm going to divide now by 4n to get x by itself. So x equals m divided by 4n. Okay. Last one here on the front. Subtract 13. Can I combine 25 and 13? Hopefully you see that you can. 25 minus 13 is 12. Divide by negative 2, I get x equals negative 6. Tried to throw you a curveball there. That's an old one. You get an answer there. Why? There's only one variable, as opposed to all the other problems which had two or more variables. And a couple more on the back. We'll be almost done. Uh, number five, I got X and Y. I want to get X by itself. So what do I do? I got to move the seven Y to the other side. I'm moving the whole thing. I'm not splitting it because I don't really care about getting Y by itself. So to move the whole thing to the other side, I'm going to add it in this case. Oops. So three X equals 12 plus seven Y. I can't do anything with that. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3. So I get x equals 12 plus 7y divided by 3. Last one, and then a board problem. We'll be done. Again, we want to get x by itself. we got a fraction. I always recommend getting rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 3. The way you get rid of a fraction is by multiplying by the denominator on both sides. So I have 3z equals, and then the right-hand side is just all numerator now, 2xy. If I want x by itself, I can divide by everything except x. So in this case, 2 and y cancels the y, cancels the 2. And I get x equals 3z divided by 2y. All right, last one is a word problem. It's kind of a trying to show you where this could be used. Um, on her trip to Europe, Jane was told that the temperature in a certain area was on average 30 degrees Celsius during the time she was she would be there. What clothing should Jane pack? Well, 30 degrees is pretty cold, right? In Fahrenheit. This is in Celsius. We don't really think about Celsius too much here in America. Um, so... We're going to convert 30 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit to give us a better idea of what to pack. So there's a formula right here. C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. That converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. Well, what if I want to go the other way from Celsius to Fahrenheit? What we want to do is we want to solve this equation for F. So let's do that. Again, I've got a, dis a distributive property here. If I want, or I can get rid of the fraction, which I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by 9, and I get 9c equals 5f minus 32. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 5 much easier that way. 32 times 5, or negative 32 times 5 is negative 160. I'm going to add 160. So 9C plus 160 divided by 5, right? Because that equaled 5F. I'm going to divide by 5. So I get the Fahrenheit is 9C plus 160 divided by 5. Another way of writing that would be divide both 9c by 5. So 9 divided by 5, c. 160 divided by 5 is 32. So that would be the same thing, depending on how you solved this equation. So now we're going to use this new formula to find the temperature in Fahrenheit, where Jane will be visiting. So 9 times 30, Celsius is 30, plus 160 divided by 5. So 9 times 30 is 270, plus 160 is 430, divided by 5, gives me 86. So it's going to be 86 degrees 
Fahrenheit, where she will be visiting. That's pretty warm. That's summer temperatures. Okay, so if you didn't know how to convert that, you might pack really, really cold clothing and be extremely hot when you're on your visit. Just an example of how this kind of thing can be used. That's the end of lesson three, and that's the end of our solving equations part. Uh, we're going to move on to inequalities next.